pay no attention to this while I load the other scene. Um, ha, ha. But I do like to use this as a quitty, excuse me, pretty simple and quick exercise on how UVs work. That is, I like to texture a Coke can or a soda can of some sort because what UVs are, well, I have a four-word definition. And my four-word definition, oops, hey, Gray, I... I just saw it. Okay. Fixed. Sorry about that. I turned Discord off and as well I uh, muted, well I muted my Discord and I turned off the screen share. So hopefully this is better. What I do have open though, and I do want to kind of take role with this as well. So Sleepy Pastel, I see you and I need to see everybody in the Twitch. So guys, stop hanging out on Discord, or I, actually, if you can use both, that would be great, because I can hear you on Discord. Of course, I can. I always prefer hearing you. So if you want to ask questions through Discord's audio, I still prefer that. But if you want to chat, um, I do have the... I do have the Twitch chat window open. So what I've done here, this is where I left off from last class. And what I've done here is I've added some noise to my walls, and it looks crazy. Maybe a little too much noise, right? Um, so here's how we can, ooh, let's maybe, somebody was asking about a brick wall or a brick or a stone wall. So let, let's go with that. Let's start there because I think that's a great idea. Um, I'm going to start by adding the default Lambert material which seems odd since I've been telling you guys to use the AI standard surface. It's true, you absolutely should use the AI standard surface. But the nice thing about the Lambert material is it will show you the texture and texture view. So if I have anything loaded into color file, I don't even care at this point, feed something into it. I'll feed in my Apple reference into it. Sure, why not? Oh, look at that. I can actually see where the Apple falls. As long as I hit the seven, excuse me, the six button. So as a review, four for wireframe, five for shaded. Um, whoa, five is not happy for some reason. There it goes. Five for shaded. Generally, if you're doing modeling, you should stay in five mode. Six for texture mode, which is what we'll be talking about today. And of course, seven is lighting. And again, please excuse the neighbors. Sorry, I can hear them really, really well. At least there's no dishes today. So there's my lighting lighting mode with the, <laughs> the lighting mode with the Apple, right? So if you want to use a, a default Lambert material just to check where your image falls onto your object, that's actually not a bad idea. We can go to Window, Modeling Editor, UV Editor, and we can actually see the Apple here. I have my object selected. If I select my object, then you begin to see these UVs, these lines here. I can turn the image off. These are my UVs. And they look really bad and wrong. But these are my UVs. And I, these are, this is what I need to fix. So if I wanted to make sure that my apple was just being projected on one side, I could select these faces. I, I, you should do this in the one mode, by the way. So I could select these faces by hitting F11 or right-click face selection. And if there are more faces that I want to select, anything that's planar on this plane, basically, I want to, I want to select. So I like to convert Control F10 to select to edges, Control F11, and that kind of grows my faces in F for fit. But I don't want the faces to necessarily wrap around to the other side. I missed one in the corner there, so I'll hit Shift and select all the faces. Now all these faces are selected on this plane, or I should say this wall, I guess. And if we know that this is gonna be the Z axis that this is on, then I can make new UVs that are just based on that axis under planar, Z axis, apply. And look, that immediately made a new UV shell, and look at that, immediately you can even tell that now I have an apple on my wall 
And if I change my UV shell, hey, that's kind of cool. It even tiles. Look at that. Right? So that's kind of a, a really blunt force way of showing you how this works. If I make a UV projection, it's almost like a projector. It's projecting in that specific axis. And if I stretch my UV shell to be the size of the object or the wall, or in this case, a bunch of faces, then you're going to basically project that image onto that UV shell. And again, I can see this under Window, Modeling Editor, UV Editor. And if you want to turn on your image, it's this little mountain with, I guess, a sun. And now you can see that, for example. So if we have bad UVs on this object, maybe I select the entire room and I do something really silly like under UV, I say, yeah, it's a sphere. Obviously it's a sphere, right? Sure. So I get this big spherical projection and now it's trying to kind of map this as if it were a spherical object, which clearly it's not. So that doesn't make any sense. I'll go back to six mode because it's struggling with the lighting a little bit. And obviously a spherical projection is wrong. The floor is really bad. So you can also see what bad UVs look like when you have really, really bad texture stretching. So that's kind of what we need to fight with today. <clears throat> and again, inevitably every object needs to have the AI standard surface. But for right now, if we're testing something, we can start with a default Lambert just so we can see the texture when we, uh, when we lay it on the UVs. Um, and also, it's at this point that I want to reiterate. Hey there, Captora. Hey there, Mason. Good, you're here. Excellent. Um, now, under text channel and under announcement, because this is how serious I am about this, UVs equal, like this is the definition, texture, placement, coordinate system. It's only four words. It's easy to remember. And I'm pinning it because I'm that whoop, because I'm that serious about it. You need to know this. But if you want to think of it in terms of maybe lag, like longitude and latitude, that might help you to think like this tabletop, the UVs are basically the longitude and latitude. So how this wood grain falls onto the table is based on the longitude and latitude, or based on the mapping, or based on the UVs. So if we look at our UV map of the table, we have the object selected. Select the object. You can actually see here how the tabletop is falling onto my wood texture. So I either have the option of modifying the image so that it fits around the UVs, or I have the option of maybe moving my UVs around until the texture or photo makes sense. So here, how can I explain this? So if I select these faces and I want to change the texture specifically here, I can convert these faces to UVs by using Control F12. And now you can see over here the UVs are selected. And if I move the UVs, watch what happens. As I move the UVs, watch the texture change here. So as I warp my UVs, you can see the wood grain is also warping. And this is what we want to get away. Well, we want to make sure that we do not have stretching or warping textures. So we want to avoid any, any textures that looked weirdly warped or weirdly stretched. And obviously, if your UVs are on top of each other, overlapping UVs are also bad. So no stretching, no overlapping, otherwise you get really weird, weird texturing like this. Okay, so how do we fix something like this? Well, these are the UVs that came with the table. We can make our own UVs a few different ways. One, we can select the top of the table and then project onto it. We can fix the UVs by kind of projecting on each side of the table. And that's sort of how you want to do this, right? So you always, if you know you have something that's kind of boxy, then each plane should have its own UV shell. So top of the table definitely should have its own UV, UV shell. Sides of the table should have their own UV shell. If the camera sees the bottom of the table, which it doesn't, but if it did, then this should also have its own UV shell. And they should all be properly spaced and properly stretched so we don't get any weird warping of our texture. So if I wanted to do this, let's try it. I'll select the table, 
and I'll make new UVs planar and I'll base it on the Y axis. So I change my axis to Y and I click apply. Now you'll see again this kind of a uh, mm, Square with, it's almost like a gizmo. It basically is a gizmo because you can pull on the corners and scale it. And again, this is scaling the UV shell. And as I scale the UV shell, I can see my wood grain change. It will even tile when I make it too small. And you can also see the projection width and height over here in the attribute editor. Okay, so that's great. But what's, what's the bad news? Well, the bad news is that I might get the tabletop fixed, but then if we look at the sides here, we have this horrible problem where now my sides of my table are stretched vertically. Hopefully you can see that the, the wood is now stretched vertically. And it's because the sides of the table don't have a separate UV shell. I can make a separate UV shell by selecting all of these faces and making a new UV projection. So the real question is how the heck do I select these faces quickly? And that's the big like bugaboo. That's the big challenge here. If I want to just get the side of the table, how do I do it? And we could go to the side view, select just these vertices, go back to the perspective view, and you can see basically I have the vertices selected for the side, but I want to convert to faces. If you remember your shortcuts, control F11, now I've got all those faces selected for the side of the table, and I can make another UV projection from that angle. Um, you do have to figure out the angle, but here's a great tip, guys. So hopefully you're watching this. Um, you can project it from the right axis, which in this case is X and so that's probably going to be your best bet and that's probably what you should do but another trick is to actually project it from the camera angle so you can actually project it from your camera or you can of course pick X because that's the axis we're projecting on either one will work and now I now I now have a shell for that side it's a little hard to see but once I select the object How do I see that shell? Hit F12. I said F12. Hit F12. Select one UV. Control right click. Two UV shell. Move it. And you can actually see, oh, there's one UV shell there. Repeat that process. Control right click. Two UV shell. Now I see there's another one here. Um, where's my other UV shell? Oh my god, I thought I had another one. Let's try and selecting it over, select it here. Control right click to UV shell. Oh, well then that is the other UV shell, but it's clearly stretched. So it's really, really, really huge. Like if I were to turn on texture view, like the six key right now and zoom in, that wood is wrong. Um, because you can see it's stretched out really badly this way. I probably would want to scale it this way until it makes sense size-wise with the rest of the table here. And then we could pack this, like pack these shells basically, into the texture space. And we want to pack these as closely as we can to try to make use of all the texture space. We don't want them overlapping, however. We have a, a way to do this if we select all of them. We use shift right click, layout, and we can lay them out. <laughs> and it doesn't always give you the best results. That says that that's the best packing. Um, I would disagree, but the point is, is we can now take this shell, control right click to go to UV shell and move it until it corresponds with that side of the table. and see if our wood doesn't look any better. Oh my god, it's stretched so badly. Is that even the right side? I think it is. It's just stretched the wrong way, isn't it? Yep. Okay. 
So it's both turned and stretched. All right. Awesome. So select the shell again. Let's try. Rotating it this way. Instead. And do this and see what my viewport looks like. Is this any better? And you might may find that the scaling really did a number on it. So maybe I need to scale it back. What does it look like? Okay, that looks a little better, but yeah. Come on, undo. There we go. So if we begin scaling this, then we might find that actually it was scaled in the wrong axis, meaning that perhaps Perhaps instead of scaling it this way, we went the wrong direction, right? They wanted to do it. Uh, not right click, man. Left click. It got crooked. I don't know why. That's weird. So these UV shells are the key. You basically need to move the UV shells, move scale and rotate the UV shells until you're happy with the results. And you kind of have to look, this is why I use the Lambert material sometimes, so that I can look and see if this looks good in my viewport. And obviously matching up wood grain from side to side might be a pain, but you can actually see the wood grain is wrapping pretty nicely the way that it should. And you're probably thinking, oh my god, that's a lot of work. And it is, but you know what? It's all about what the camera sees. So in other words, only worry about the angle the camera is looking at, meaning that probably I should have fixed this side of the table. Um, let's cheat. Let's just rotate the table around, right? I mean, I'm okay with that. Is this the side that I worked on? Looks like it is. Okay. And then we can do the same thing on this side, right? Where we select these faces, make a planar projection, and do the same thing. And you're probably thinking, that's so much work. What the heck? Are you crazy? And I'm like, no, that's, that's really how it's done. But we do have a UV automatic, and this is really dangerous, and I hesitate to mention this now, because if this creates 100 different UV shells, you're going to cry. If this creates 20 UV shells, you're going to cry. The more shells that this creates, the worse off you are. But if it creates something that looks good, which you can see, hey, look, my wood grain looks pretty good. My wood grain looks pretty good. Top looks pretty good. Then, hey, I mean, why complain about it if it looks good? Well, the answer is, if you select the object and look at your UV editor, you might notice that it's going to be a lot of work to mess with all these shells, possibly. I don't know. I mean, that's kind of every major part of the table, and it's packed perfectly for you. So if you're happy with it and automatic mapping works for you, then consider yourself lucky. Consider yourself like, hey, that algorithm did what it was supposed to, and I'm happy with that. But for the most part, most of the time, that's not going to happen. For the most part, you might get lucky with automatic wrapping, or you might not. So let's take this banana as an example. What happens if we automatically unwrap it? How many shells are we going to get? Let's find out. Window, modeling, editor, UV editor. Oh my freaking god. What on earth? Do I need this many shells for my banana? No. Because every, everywhere that you see the edge of a shell, you're gonna have, this is a UV seam. And the more UV seams that you have, the more you're gonna cry, the more of a nightmare this is gonna be. So please, like don't, just don't, this is, wow, um, not the right way to do it. 
So I guess I, I guess I'm texturing a banana now because uh, if you want to have a banana in your scene, you should probably know how to texture it. I'm, I'm thinking we could do the apple. Does anybody have any? Does it, people we want to take a vote on this? Banana apple? Don't make me do the grapes. <laughs> banana, banana or apple, or should we just do the do the wall maybe or maybe a coke coke can? I don't know. What do you guys want to? I'm switching over to. My browser for a second here. Do the banana. The banana. Okay, banana. Apple. Uh, wait, <laughs> Charles, you are overruled by the class. We're doing the banana. Okay. So this is a whoa, man. I don't know what happened back here. That's whoo. I really messed that up. Is that the side that the camera sees? Please tell me that's not the side that the camera sees. No, it's not. Okay, I don't know what happened to the other side of the banana. But we're going to pretend that's not there because it's really not. Again, huh, this is a perfect example of if your work sucks, turn it away from the camera so we don't see it. So hide bad work. Hide bad modeling. Hide your bad seams because God knows that this is a very weird crooked banana on this side. And I don't, that's just weird. I'm not even going to, I'm going to pretend that's not there. We're just going to put it on the other side. We'll just rotate it. It's cool. No big deal. So how do we do this? How do we uh, make UVs for this? Check your UV menu. Is there a primitive here that might work best? O obviously, automatic is going to give us too many seams, too many shells. So that's out. So what else? What do we? What, what else can we do here? What about cylindrical? Would you Would you say that a banana is mostly a cylinder? I mean, that's how we made it. So I'm going to go with cylinder. Now here's where things get weird. The cylindrical projection, you can see right off the bat, is like the wrong angle and like really weird. So we need to manipulate the widget. Click on this like kind of red cross down here. That activates the normal widget that you're accustomed to. And this is a little bit easier to deal with. I like to rotate this. So let's see, I'll rotate this so that the cylinder is hopefully starting to wrap around the banana in a way that makes a little bit more sense. So how do we want the cylinder to wrap around this banana? We can also scale out the cylindrical projection. Um, and you're, again, probably thinking, oh my god, this is crazy. Don't worry, we're going to fix it. Um, whoops. Just get it roughly where you want it. It doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm kind of like roughly moving the cylinder around the banana. And again, does not need to be perfect at all. Just get it roughly around it. Okay, now let's see, what does this look like in our modeling editor, UV editor? What on earth, what have I done? Oh my God, I've done this. That's, that's really scary looking. Doesn't look like a banana at all, clearly. So then, let's try to make the uh, much better UVs, because that's scary. Here's what we do. Figure out where you want the seam. And yeah, you can probably hide this later. But let's figure out where we want the seam. I'll hit F10 to go into edge mode. And I'll say, yeah, I want the seam back here, where we don't see it, away from the camera. Back where this really bad modeling is. We won't talk about that. I don't know what happened there. But my banana got dropped a few <laughs> dozen times or something. I'm, not, I'm just going to pretend where the bad modeling is, that's where I'm going to put the seam. Why not? Sure. I think that's a good idea. Uh, if it's not dishwashing, then it's screaming neighbors. You know how it goes. It's fine. It's all fine. Okay, so now I've selected where I want the seam to be. And now I want to cut this up here under UV cut. We have cut or sew. You can either do it here or you can do it in your UV editor. If you do it in the UV editor, it's up here. Oh, we actually have a shortcut, shift X. So now, uh, did it actually cut? I don't think it did. Make sure that it really does what it's supposed to because if it actually cuts like it's supposed to, then you should see a white seam. Um, at least you're supposed to see a white seam. Where I'm seeing a white seam is not in the right place. So that's got me a little concerned. Here's what we're going to do. 
I'm going to give you some 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 really 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 cool a cool little tip here. Tips and tricks. Tips and tricks. This one's really cool. I think we can remember or store our selection. Believe it or not. And we can do this by making a quick select set. This is a really unusual trick, but I think it's cool. So you're just going to have to bear with me. So under select, quick select set, um, it's saying we don't have one, but we can create one, right? So under create sets, there it is. So under sets, quick create set, quick select set, and we'll call it a banana seam because that's what it's going to be, I promise. And now we have this at the bottom of our outliner. Why the heck did I do that? Because now I can always get back to that selection. It's a way to remember your selection, which I personally think is a pretty cool little trick. Now let's try and fix this mess because boy, what the heck happened here? Um, I'll select a UV by hitting F12. I'll use Control right click. Maya, I said Control right click to UV shell. That selects the shell. So if I actually made a seam, see, it doesn't even. Seam, the seam did not work very well. We can unwrap our UVs by using shift right click, unfold, and just use unfold. And there's basically one UV shell. It's unwrapped this way. One of our rules for UVs is to try to have as few shells as possible. So if you just wanted one UV shell, it might be enough actually. It might be good. That might be all you need. But we really have to ask ourselves, where is the seam? Oh, look. It did make the seam in the right place. Okay, I guess I was wrong. We can also sew these together. So if I hit F10, go back to edge mode, wherever I see a seam I don't want, I select that edge and I go to sew. And you can see it's sewing it back together. I guess a good way to think about UVs would be like your clothing before they're sewn together, they're flat pieces of cloth, right? So if you go to a tailor, they make, of course, their clothing from flat pieces of cloth. It only becomes 3D when it hangs on your body. So you can think of your UV mode almost as like the tailor's view, if you want to think of it that way. Let's try to use some shortcuts here. So is Shift S. So I can select the edge and hit. You got to hit the shortcuts over here, so Shift S. Note the shortcuts only work over here. They do not work here. So you can select in your viewport, but you have to hit Shift S over here. And now you can see I'm getting my banana fixed up. Okay. So select the edge you want to sew, hit Shift S. By the way, you can do it in either place. So if you wanted to select the edges here or there, you can kind of see the area I'm trying to fix down here. Is, uh, is here. So if I wanted to select the edge here, I hit Shift S, that sews, sews them back together, Shift S. Who's got questions? I only have one seam here. Now, if I wanted to unfold this again, and again, speak up if you have questions, because look, I have overlapping UVs over here, that's bad. We never want overlapping UVs. Control right click to UV shell, shift right click, unfold. Oh my god, I missed. Shift right click, unfold. It's the big one in the middle. There we go. And that, believe it or not, is enough for me to texture my banana. It's one UV shell, but it's fine. Who's got questions for me? Somebody has questions, right? Somebody's got to have questions. I'm going to check who's in the chat. Mwah, bananas. Um, we can use your imagination. Just keep this, just the two apples and the one. Okay, yes. All right, no questions. Just some, some, some weird chatting. Turn the lights off. Yeah, it's all good. Sure. It's, it's Twitch Inception is what it is, everybody. Twitch within Twitch within Twitch. We can just keep going with this. What do you want to do if you don't have F keys? F for fit, no questions. <laughs> what do you do if you don't have an F key? You don't have an F key on your keyboard? I don't believe you. F for fit, man. 
or frame if you prefer. So, um, yeah, uh, what to do about these bananas? Uh, what to do about the banana texture, right? Let's look at the render camera. How much of this banana do we really see? We only see this kind of front part of the banana. So I'm gonna give you guys some really cool, cool, cool extra tips and tricks here. So if we select just the faces, and we can grow our selection a few different ways. Actually, I think it's, let's see, period and comma. Wait a minute here, is it shift? Yeah. So shift, period, and comma will grow the selection. If I grow the selection of my banana, all these faces are selected, and I create my UVs from this camera angle, this is like a really cool trick, then that's my no new UV shell here that I just created from that camera angle. Note that it looks like a banana. This one, not so much. So, and I also have this wacky part here, which I want to cut. So I'll just go ahead and cut this. Shift X, I think we said it was. I have a seam there, cool. And now we can kind of pack these shells together. But I, I, I do kind of wonder about um, where this is supposed to go, per se. Or maybe what, where this is supposed to go. Oh, wow. Okay, so this lines up with this over here. So logically, this lines up with this. So if we sew these back together, we can, of course, use Shift-S to do this. So if we just click and hit Shift-S, we can go down the line and sew all this, this guy back together. Like this. Sorry, there's like a toddler next door, so I have no idea. Between the snoring cats, the toddler, my, my roommate doing dishes. <laughs> Online teaching is a joy! It's wonderful. It's good stuff. <laughs> Making baby noises in the background. It's good stuff. All right. Anyway. It's nonstop entertainment. Okay. So now that things have been basically sewed back together, kind of, we still have this weird problem where one shell looks like you a... You sound like you're laughing through the pain. Y yeah. That's pretty accurate. <laughs> You, if you don't if you don't laugh you cry so I try to opt for the former as much as I can. Control right click um, to UV shell. Once the UV shell is selected, then shift right click and then we can wait. Come on, shift right click. Work for me. Work for me. Shift right click. Where are you? Oh man. Woo. <laughs> Woo. Unfold. Woo. There we go. That's a big banana. So now we have two. Nah, you can cry. You just gotta rename your stream to Existential Crisis. <laughs> See, you you guys have like student. You have help on campus when you have when you have your emotional breakdowns. Teachers don't get that. We we don't get that kind of help. We don't even get insurance. Ha <laughs> ha! Insurance? Are you kidding me? Part timers? Ha <laughs> ha! What do you think I made out of money? Come on. The president gets all that. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> shift right click. Uh, let's see. Shift right click to unfold. Uh, can we, do we want to unfold all of these both? What's going to happen? Oh, it's no longer banana shaped. How about we just pack them roughly? So we want to pack these shells. We go to what? We go to layout UV. Hopefully they'll match size a little bit. Okay, that's, that's going to be good enough for right now. So... This I now want to take a snapshot of. I do have some overlapping UVs, but I'm going to leave them overlapping just to just to prove a point. So, two UV shell, and they ha they're having a good time back there. So, basically, um, I hope you guys are paying attention. This is this is the secret to the sauce. We want to either lay the image of the banana over top of the UV shell which is probably what you want to do, and then in Photoshop, stretch it, clone stamp it, do whatever you need to do, warp it, to get the photo of a banana across the UV shell. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it is to stretch the UVs until the UVs are actually stretched across the image. Either way, 
we need this as a UV snapshot. So I'll save this out. We'll call it banana UV. There we go. And this is going to be your texture resolution. You should try to stick with a minimum of 1024. And I mean, the camera is far away, so maybe 1024 will be enough. If 1024 looks bad, pixelated, etc., then, you know, jump up to 2048. You probably won't need a 4K texture, but I mean, if it's a tabletop and it's huge and it takes up the entire render, then maybe a 4K tabletop maybe might make sense, but I don't really think it's necessary. Okay, so this is going to be, again, banana UV. Make sure to label it UV. Make sure that the object is selected. This is a gotcha. Everybody screws this up, including me, all the time. It's got to be green. It's got to literally be green in the viewport. Don't accept anything else. The object must... Oh, there we go. So the object is selected, and now you can click Apply, and now it's saved the, the UVs. Um, I know that's, that's kind of really obnoxious, but... Um, I can't tell you how many times I'm in comp component selection mode, like UV selection mode or face or edge selection mode, and then it refuses to save the UV snapshot. So you've got to be in object mode for the UV snapshot to work. That's really, really, really important. And I all the time mess that up. So make sure the object is green, then click apply. That saves out your UV map. Then you can take your UV map into your... Image editor of choice. I'm using Photoshop, although I guess a lot of people are, are not um, Photoshop fanatics, I guess. Some people are Procreate people. Some people are Clip. I don't care what you use. You could use GIMP for all I care. You could use Paint Shop Pro. You could use uh, Fractal Painter. You, it does not matter to me what you use. But um, whatever you use, you, you're going to need to... Take the UVs, well open them, you should just save them. So open up the UVs, sorry about the messy desktop. Of course everybody, right? Everybody has a messy desktop. Find the UVs. If you saved it as a Maya IFF file, you might think this is bad. It's not, actually. It just has transparency on by default. Make a new layer. And I'm sure your Clip Studio supports layers. And if somebody's wondering, like, what if I don't know Photoshop? <coughs> you know, use whatever you're familiar with. As long as you can see your UVs. That's all I care about. Once you see your UVs, then guess what? Now we can take the banana reference that we had earlier there it is and we can take this banana reference and if you guessed that you would warp this banana reference over top of your UVs then you're pretty smart because that's what I'm gonna do so I'll flip this uh, horizontally or again you can move your UVs I keep telling you this and I'm gonna keep telling you this because it seems like never ending that I repeat this, but you have two options. Either stretch the image around your UVs here in Photoshop or the image editor of your choice, or if that's not what you feel like doing, then, you know, the other option is you could just stretch your UVs around the banana. I don't care. Pick your poison. I really don't care. Um, but what I do care about is that your image, your photo, needs to go completely across the UVs. This is bad. So remember when you were a child and, and they were like, you know, now stay in the lines, stay in the lines, it's really important to stay, no, not for this, for this I want you to try to go out of the lines a little bit, not completely, please, but go out of the lines so that your color is actually going past the UV. And if you need to warp the image as much as possible, I don't care, warp it as much as you think is necessary. There's this really cool icon up here that turns on warping. So, I mean, warp it as much as you need to warp it. I don't care. Whatever it takes. Warp your image. It's cool. Again, either warp your image or warp your UVs. 
if you have good UVs, if your UVs are actually what, what, what they're supposed to be, so if you use like the unfold and the layout function, for example, stop it, then there we go. So if you have good UVs, then your texture will always fall onto your object correctly. Boom, done. Turn off these UVs, save this as your banana texture. So get, this gets saved as my banana texture. Uh, Maya likes PNGs, but whatever floats your boat. Call this TXT versus UV. TXT. So there it is. I got to stop saying float your boat and, and pro tips. It's like I say that way too. We it's just weird to say that so as many times as I do. Now, um, we know we want an AI standard surface on here. We know that. But... For right now, just for funsies, let's put a standard Lambert on it because in that way we can feed in the color texture and we can see how it falls on the object. Because I made, whoops, wrong one. Because I made the UVs based on my camera view, I have this added advantage of it's gonna look good. Haha. -ha. In fact, maybe even great from this view because this is the view I made my UVs from. So it's kind of cheating in a way, but not really, because there's no such thing as cheating in 3D. I'm letting you guys download um, download uh, models. I mean, that's about as cheating as you can get at this point, really. Now, here's the problem. Obviously, the other side of the banana doesn't look so great. If you don't see that, it doesn't matter, right? But if we want to fix this, we could go back into Photoshop we could turn our UVs back on. Damn it, where are my layers? Stupid layers, where are you? Come back. There you go. So turn the UVs back on, and then you could proceed to fill the rest of the UVs up with color data. So maybe I would want to take this layer, duplicate it, maybe flip it vertically, because that makes sense, right? So flip vertical in this case. Um, oh no, flip horizontal, sorry. Edit, transform, flip horizontal. I guess the vertical flip was un unnecessary, sorry. There you go. And then obviously erase out the parts that we don't want under the banana. So we're just left with this color data. This may not be a perfect um, fade, I guess you could say, or a perfect, a perfect job, but you're always going to be fighting against seams. So the thing about UVs and texturing is the challenge is always to try to not have seams or to have obvious seams. So whatever you can do to cover up your texture seams, you probably want to do that. Lower the layer opacity and then move the banana into place. And yeah, we're back to the whole warping thing, right? So then Back to our warping, hold down control, hold down control, and if this gets boring after a while, you know, turn on this warp tool up there, and that way, I hear somebody, who's, somebody's got a question, all right, who's got a question, you can interrupt me, you can say something, I prefer, if you do, just say something, as opposed to typing it, but you know what, I'll check the, the Twitter chat right now, since I'm sure you guys are talking about texturing over on the Twitter chat, right? <laughs> of course. Isn't college for me? Oh my god. Deletes all my object, you guys. Uh, I'm retaining none of this. I'm sorry, you've got the video to watch over anytime you want. Um, so yeah, if it ain't broke, I don't have enough features yet. Engineers, Maxim, Twitter chat. There's a lot of Twitter chat, but we're doing Twitter Inception. We're just going to have windows of, of Twitter until I get through it all. Can my jam just be jam and not have a shell of a jam projected onto it? I think you lost me on that one, on that metaphor. Um, you don't have to have for the candles and glasses. That's correct. That actually is really useful. So if you know for glasses, for example, it's just solid glass and you don't care about putting lipstick on it, don't care about fingerprints, then no, you don't have to have UVs or textures on glass. Or even metal 
if like that metal bowl doesn't have any fingerprints on it or that metal bowl doesn't have anything else on it, then no, you don't even have to add UVs or texturing to the metal bowl. What about candles? Um, is there going to be an obvious texture on the candle wax? If not, then no. So what you should worry about with the candles is your material qualities. How high is the translucency? How much subsurface scattering is there? Do I have something to share with subsurface scattering? I feel like I do. Oh yeah, uh, where is it? Oh no, oh my god. So many tabs. Did I lose it? <sighs> yes. There's a document here for Arnold, and I guess I'm going to put this in the chat as well. See, I can chat too. <laughs> Read up on your subsurface scattering. Could be a good idea. Oh, God. My computer hates this right now. It's struggling. Why do you make me do Twitter Inception on top of everything else? It's too much. Too much. Video feedback. Anyway, read up on subsurface scattering to figure out your candles. It's just basically about how much light goes through the wax. The thing to keep in mind, well, other than reading this, is the important attribute is going to be radius. The lower your radius, the less light goes into the translucent material. The higher your radius, the more light goes into the translucent or subsurface scattering material. This is important for wax. This is important for skin. If you have a dead body part, guess what? It should have this skin material or skin preset on it then play with the radius um do fruits have this yes grapes really grapes really really have this so it's really important for grapes to have subsurface scattering or translucency I'm back to maya um do we need it for our banana um logically a little bit but you know what i'm not going to because subsurface scattering is actually pretty expensive so if we can get away with not using subsurface scattering it's less rendering time, basically. So grapes, yeah, you got to have subsurface scattering with grapes. Just definitely. You just got to do it. But uh, with a banana, you can maybe get away with not having subsurface scattering. Let's find out. Um, save this as my new texture. You can probably save over the old one. By the way, you could use the IFF file if you really want to. I don't use JPEGs if you can avoid it. So like PNGs are typically what I use. Um, we'll call this Banana Texture 2 and see how this looks. I feel like if you guys are chatting in Twitch, you're not paying attention. I keep, He keeps saying Twitter. Uh, Twitter, Twitch. Yeah, I'm sorry. My roommate's Twitter obsessed. I'm sorry. All, all I get is Twitter all day long. And so, God, Twitter this, Twitter that. Twi Twitter's for twits, in my opinion. But, you know... The, Whatever, I'll just keep that to myself. Back to Twitch. Excuse me. I'm sorry. No, I have drank two cups of coffee today. So, please try and follow along. All right. This banana. Right. This is my new texture. Back in Maya. You can see how deformed my banana is, but that's okay. I just want to switch out the texture, right? So now, where are we? Go to the attributes of that material. This guy's got a crazy history on it, so Alt-Shift-D gets rid of the history. Then we can go back to Lambert Color. This has the old texture. So I'll add the new one. Does that make a difference? Yes, it does. See, now you can see the new texture work. You can also still see the very obvious seam. So that would be the seam that I would have to fix in Photoshop. And that's kind of why everybody hates texturing and UV unwrapping because this is what, this is our battle. This is our um, huge issue that we're fighting against all the time. With rendering, we have to battle noise. With texturing, we have to b battle these like seams in here, right? So it's always about seams. Again, best way to fix seams is just not to see them. So if you can turn the object so we don't see the seams, then we're good. See, from this standpoint, I don't see any seams. I'm okay with that. However, I do see, if I look carefully at the stem, whoops, if I look carefully at the stem, I see some white. So this is a texture problem. I see some pure black. 
So this is the kind of thing that we would need to fix in Photoshop. Or if you wanted to, I guess you could stretch your UVs around. It's up to you. So either stretch the UV around the texture or stretch the texture around the UV. I'll leave that up to you. That's your decision. Um, for me, it might be a little easier for me to just stretch. Ah, I see the problem, right? So I see the top layer is actually covering up. So I'll just erase it like that. And then go back to the bottom layer. And if I want to, again, warp this, I can. And you know, you may just need to warp it because we really don't want to see, we don't want to see any white here. This is what I meant about coloring outside of the lines. You want your color data to go beyond the UVs. And if you're like, whoa, fine, I can use the clone stamp tool, then yeah, I don't care what you use. If you want to use the clone stamp tool, definitely people do that a lot. It's fine. Hold down Alt to sample, and then you know just clone stamp, right? And that's fine too. So that's cool. Just make sure to turn your UVs off if you're not using them anymore. Because if you save your UVs as part of your texture, then you get a really weird wireframe effect. Nobody wants that. Well, unless you're rendering wireframe. So maybe, I guess if you're rendering wireframe, then you can leave your UVs on. Most people don't want that. But, you know, I'll leave that up to you. Point is, is I keep saying, your color, your color should extend beyond the UVs. So like up here, it doesn't, right? Up here we have this white gap, and that's showing up in Maya too. So if I rotate around, that's basically where this white gap is right here. So again, if you want to use your clone stamp tool, that's fine. Hit Alt, and then just clone stamp. Whoops, well, obviously be careful when you do it. And make sure that you're not, oh, yeah, that looks good. So then make sure again that you're coloring outside of the lines this time. You're allowed to color outside the lines now. It's, it's a good, good idea. So get all that. That hopefully solves that gap. Again, save it. Um, because Maya is currently using the other texture, I'm not going to be able to just save over it. I already got that mistake earlier. So if you need to save your textures as TXT2 or TXT3, fine. Just do that because it doesn't always want to save over, All right? And now go to the attributes of the material, control A, or if you need to go into your material editor, that's cool too, I guess you can do that um, either way. Um, I feel like at this point we should just make the damn banana material because we know it's an AI standard surface, don't we? We could figure that one out, call it banana. Is it meant to be shiny? I don't know about any shiny bananas, I don't know about you. So I turn the specular down to zero, I go to color, and I feed in my new texture that I've created. Okay, that's going to be the third iteration. There it is. And now, of course, add this to the object. You can all say duh at that point. So then right-click, assign material. And now it's fixed. And you can see the seam is... Uh, it's still kind of there, but if you don't see it again in the render view, I'm not worried about it. I could probably do a little more work on the top of my banana, clearly. That's not fixed. But again, what do you see in the render view? Like that's kind of what's important. So I see a little bit of black here on the top. That definitely should still be fixed. But what I want to know is, what does the render look like? Can't trust the viewport. Select the banana. Go back to the render window. Make sure that you have render selected objects only, and then that way we won't be waiting forever for this render. I hope. Yep, there's my banana. 
looks pretty good. There's like still, like I said, a, a black top to it. But, you know, I could take my banana and my table, have both selected, use my render region, render both. I like to have the render selected object on, but don't forget that it's on. So if you have nothing selected in your scene and you render black, then, well, obviously check that checkbox because I sometimes forget it's on and then I'm wondering why am I rendering black? So yeah, it looks pretty good. You can zoom in using Control and Alt. And there it is. Pretty damn realistic, except for noise. I obviously need to turn up some sampling. But I got a pretty damn realistic banana on a pretty damn realistic wooden table. And I'm going to ask about questions. Not from Twitter, but from Twitch. Twitter, I don't even know her. Tweets are for twits, I keep saying. Um, if we have the Twitch chat open, then we're watching the stream. I know that, but um, I, I would prefer to have questions like that I can hear because that's easier when I work, but I kind of have to check the, the Twitch chat once in a while. So goodbye weekend of recharging mental stability. <laughs> uh, whoever invented this is a sadist. Oh, UV unwrapping, you mean? You're talking about UV unwrapping? Yeah, yeah, yeah. UV unwrapping is, is one of the most crazy and difficult and weird things that you'll have to deal with. The good news is it gets a lot, this is as hard as it gets. So it's not going to get any more difficult than UV unwrapping. So that's at least the good news. Um, the bad news, though, is everything maybe you need to unwrap slightly diff differently. Um, there, is a, there is a really, really fast and easy way to unwrap stuff that you know will always be correct. Maybe I should just go over that, perhaps. I always like to just make the UVs from the render camera because, for me, that just saves on time. But note that the banana has a nasty seam in the back and so on. If this is for a game engine, then there's just no way, seriously, there's just simply no way in a game engine that this is going to be okay, because once your camera goes around to the back of the banana, then you're going to be like, man, fire that texture guy. That texture guy doesn't know what he's doing. There's a giant seam everywhere I look. So when your camera moves around the object, or when we're talking about animation or video games or movies, then you can't get away with just hiding your seam in the back. Um, so then things get get even more difficult, right? At least for things that are just a still render with no animation, then hey, guess what? You can just turn the object around, you can hide your seam. But otherwise, we've got problems. Um, what's a, what is a apple? It's mostly a sphere, kind of. So I'll use a spherical projection to start with. I'll go to my UV editor, and I'll see what this looks like. How bad is this, really? Uh, it's kind of not great. I mean, we could scale the UVs and whatever. Kind of put it roughly in the texture space, but that's that's not really very good. It's just a starting place. You can actually see where the seam is on the apple, for example. So how can I make this better? Well, the really important part, guys, that you should really be paying attention to, most of all, hit F12 to select your UVs. And once you have a shell, you can use shift right click. This is really important. And with shift right click, go to unfold and then just use the unfold algorithm. That is a perfect algorithm or I should say algorithmically gives you perfect UVs. So this is a perfect unfold. And now at this point, if you want to pack it into your UV space, you can use shift right click layout and then we've got layout UV, and then it's packed pretty well in that zero to one space. So that then I'm done. So really, guys, if you're panicking and you're like, this seems crazy. Well, it is a little crazy, but really for your notes, think about this. First, use shift right click to lay out. I'm sorry, I went backwards a little bit. First, unfold the UVs. And then once you unfold the UVs, then lay them out. So it's a two step process, basically. Unfold, layout. That's it. Um, of course, that just makes one shell. 
If you're dealing with an object that might have multiple UV shells, then you need to do that for each UV shell. It just is a question of how many UV shells do you think you need. Um, for this apple, probably one, if you don't count the stem, is fine. Oh my god, that toddler is crying. Poor toddler. I don't even know how I should rotate this. Oof, I don't know if you guys can hear the toddler in the background, but yikes. Okay. So, there we go. So I've rotated it again so that the seam is in the back. And you might also note that the cylinder is for the stem here. And we maybe can just get away with that default UV. We don't always have to unwrap everything. We don't have to unwrap this. If our gold looks good, we've got gold candlesticks, we don't have fingerprints, we don't have blood stains. it's fine, 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 then don't UV unwrap it. Save some time. Same thing with the wax. If you don't have some kind of weird pattern on the wax, then there's no reason to unwrap it. If you have paint effects, guess what? You've got your UVs and you've got your texture for free. Yay. So why is that good or bad? Well, this is the texture. <laughs> um, so it's good because you get your UVs and texturing for free. It's bad because unfortunately the paint effects materials are not AI standard surface, so they're not physically accurate. So boo, we have to actually change what we have to change the material for our paint effects. And that, that's not always particularly easy. Um, take the UV snapshot. This is going to be Apple UV. Decide on a resolution for the texture, 1024. Make sure the apple is selected. Make sure you can open that up into Photoshop. Um, and let's do it one more time. So Apple UV. For those of you guys that were not paying attention before, I'm doing it again. New layer. Um, the new layer is just so we have something under, the, because the transparency is messing with my head right now. So I make the layer underneath black. Um, and by the way, Autodesk was smart enough to make the UVs gray. So if for some reason your background is white, you should still be able to see the UVs, which is nice. So either way you want to do it, black or white background, you should still be able to see your UVs. Next, open up your Apple. Next, that actually already seems kind of stretched to me, but whatever. Next, take the apple. Oh my god, it's got specularity. we got to get rid of that. That's, that's not good. We don't want that there. So then we take the apple, we stretch it across the UVs. And I mean, you're going to have seams. It's just what we have to face with UVs. It's just part of the battle. It's just going to be a thing that you're going to have to deal with. And you're probably going to say, wow, UVs, really? Seriously, this is, this is painful. And uh, there are, mm, how do I put it? There are some other techniques where you can paint directly onto your geometry, like in, in ZBrush. And even in Maya, technically, you can paint directly onto your geometry. Yes, it's true, you can. But... For things like cloth, tablecloths, something like that, um, this method works much better. So if you're trying to make patterns for clothing or cloth, please use this method. Don't try to paint directly onto your cloth. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, clone stamp. Go back to the clone stamp because I want the clone stamp to get rid of the specularity. This is a specular highlight. It's in the photo. I don't like that, so I'm literally going to get rid of it because screw that noise. No thank you. No specular highlight for me. Just get rid of it the best you can. Uh, whoops. Like I said, emphasis on the best you can. <laughs> Do the best job you can to get rid of that specular highlight. It's bad. Okay. You can still see some specularity up here, but whatever we're just gonna have to Photoshop that stuff man so let's see how it looks so save this as your Apple texture and let's see what we get again I like PNGs but you can use almost anything I would just suggest you do not use JPEGs if you can help it I know that the original uh, data is a JPEG so that seems odd but 
We would prefer to use lossless file formats whenever possible, like TIFF or Targa or BMP. And PNG is just one that Maya happens to sort of be okay with. So now um, I know we're going to, well, screw it. Well, I was going to say, if we, what we should do is we should always put the AI standard surface. But what I like to do is put a new Lambert material on there because I like to see how the Apple texture falls on the Apple. And we can see that in the viewport with the Lambert material. We cannot see that in the viewport. Ooh, Apple. So we cannot see that with the AI standard surface. It's really stupid. And maybe if your computer is fast enough or new enough, then maybe you won't have this problem. It's a little bit stretchy. It's a little bit blurred. Note the seam is in the back. Oh, look at that great seam. Fantastic, amazing. Look at that amazing texturing. Uh, we don't see it from this angle. It's fine. We won't talk about it. So, um, I kind of want to do the stem too. But there's your apple. Um, let's make it look like the proper apple material. Because here's the thing. We don't really want to use Lambert. We want to use AI standard surface. And then we want to think about how shiny an apple is. Uh, it could be really shiny. I, I don't know. But adjust your specularity to figure this out. So obviously a weight of zero means it's a very dirty apple. It has no shininess. And a weight of one might mean that it's really like mirror mirror quality. Like take the roughness down and now you have a, a plastic or metal apple. Um, as we turn the roughness up, we probably get something closer to what an apple would look like. So make the roughness something you imagine when you go to the grocery store and you're looking at, at that wax that's on every piece of fruit and vegetable. Don't worry, the wax is made of vegetables. It's fine, you can eat it, it's edible. Point is, is that we're trying to figure out how shiny our apple is. Now we go to color. I'm not even talking about bump yet, so. Geez, skipping, skipping around, skipping around. Apple texture. So there it is. Let's put that on the apple. The, you know, like the one I just made, in other words. Which one was it? This is why we name stuff, guys, because I'm already lost. <laughs> I think it was this one, because it's the only one I don't have named. And that's why we name stuff. I guess we're going to find out. So select it, add the apple. Yep, that was it. Go back to your render, render that region, or actually make sure the object is selected. So let's select what we have worked on the table the banana the apple and then with them selected we should be able to just draw a small box around what we want rendered see how it looks The banana had to be pinned into her dress. Ooh, Apple. I don't know. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna entertain non-class related stuff. Hey, it's an apple. It's done. Ah. Ah. See, easy, no problem. Um, what about the stem though? Um, stem's kind of far away. Yeah, Apple. Yay. So the stem's kind of far away. And when things are far away, I like to cheat. <laughs> I'm like, it's far away. It's small. I'm just gonna cheat. It's too far away to worry about it. It's too small to worry about it. It's, I, I don't wanna make UVs for the stem, I'm lazy. <laughs> no, no, seriously. If the camera is this far away and the, and the object is this small, I guess you could unwrap it. I guess you could put a texture on it, but then maybe you're looking really, really close at that thing, I don't know. Cause I mean, an apple stem is, let's be honest, pretty small in the grand scheme of things. So if you get a color that looks like the apple stem, and here's an interesting trick um, that you can use if you want. We could um, take an object hmm, and put the original texture on it and color sample this. So if there's a way for us to color sample the color of the original stem, we could do that. I mean, I can make the, here, I'll show you what I mean. Anywhere in Maya, 
we can color sample. Instead of feeding in a texture, we just go to the solid color. We just use the color picker. And we're like, hey, it's a brown stem, you know? Like, we just know that. So I just color pick some brown. Or guess at it, I guess. That's OK, too. I mean, if you have your original stem photo, then you can even color pick from that. I don't care. Whatever floats your boat. Whatever you like. Whatever you want. Whatever saves time, man, because that's what it's all about. We only have until Tuesday. It's not dark enough. Let's make it pretty dark. OK, apple stem. Well, it's clearly on this apple. Wrong apple. Um, so every object should have its own separate material. And you're like, that's a lot. And I'm like, yeah, that is a lot. You can try and cheat, maybe. Oops, that didn't work. Apple stem, assign the material to the object. Yes. Why does it still look like I got the wrong color, apparently. There we go. Fixed. Yes, yes, fixed, good. Let's do that over here. Same thing. The stems can be the same, they don't even, have textures on them. They're not even unwrapped. They're basically black stems. And if this is cheating, then yes, this is cheating. But really what it is is saving time. Because if your stem doesn't have a huge amount of color information on it, um, and speaking of saving time, can I get away with just adding the same? Oh, see? Can't always get away with it because it doesn't have the same UVs. It's got to have the same UVs, right? If it has the same UVs, then logically I could maybe use the same texture. But without the same UVs, the, the texture mapping is different. Therefore, the photo of the apple will be stretched and warped and look terrible. And I mean, we could try and auto unwrap it, but that's not necessarily going to solve our problem, is it? No. Nope. Now it looks worse. So then that's why making your own UVs is kind of important. And I mean, you could try and spherical unwrapping or cheat it in some way, but ultimately ultimately you need to make UVs that look good from your camp from your render camera. So if you really want to cheat, what do we talk about? What do we talk about cheating? We're always talking about cheating. Like in 3D, it's just about how fast you're you're going or how fast you can get to where you're going. How efficient you are. So if you can create your UVs based on your camera angle, based on my render camera angle, that could save you a lot of time because all you care about is what the texture looks like from the camera angle. So let's do it a little different this time, shall we? I'm, I'm, I'm down for experimentation. I'm down to do something a little different. So then I could instead warp the UVs so instead of like always warping the image to the UVs, we're going to go the other way. I'm going to be kind of funny about it and do it this way. Because guess what? Either way works, right? So it actually really doesn't matter if you warp your UVs or if you warp your image. You can choose. Pick your poison, as they say. And so I'll leave it up to you as to which way you want to go. Um, if you're never going to move your camera around the object, if you're never going to animate anything, then guess what? You can make the UVs from your render camera, and it's like a giant cheat, because now we've got it from the render camera looking pretty good. And as long as my camera doesn't go around it, and nobody will know the difference. And nobody know about those nasty seams in the background. We won't talk about that. It's fine. It's fine. They're not there. As long as you don't see them, they're not there. What time is it? Oh, my God. We're almost out of time. I was going to texture a Coke can. So boring. Um... Actually, speaking of the, the Coke can texturing, that's in the previous video. So if you want to go like look on Twitch, not Twitter, sorry. If you want to go look on Twitch, 
then you can see the previous video from the previous class if you would like to make a Coke can um, or a soda can. Um, I don't know what happened to my stems. Actually, yes, I do. I didn't have them selected, did I? Silly. Select the stems. Okay. Make sure they're selected. Go back to the render view. And then again, use your render region. And this is how you can cut down on your rendering time. I hope you appreciate um, all, well, all of the like physically accurate stuff here, meaning that the materials are physically accurate. So if you have glass, it's physically accurate glass, for example. Even the Apple, even though there's not an Apple preset, you can see I played around with the specularity and roughness until I got something that looked pretty close to Apple-ish material. Um, so these materials, these standard surfaces, are all physically accurate. Gold in the candlestick, physically accurate. If you're using HDR lighting, again, physically accurate. The only thing that we don't have that's physically accurate that we're going to be doing for the next project and I guess I should apologize, I don't know, maybe, is that in order for things to be truly photorealistic, it's not just enough to have photorealistic modeling, it's not enough to have photorealistic texturing, yes, use photos, it's not enough to have HDR lighting in your sky dome, but that's required, it's not enough to, um, to have all of the pieces in place, because actually, if those pieces aren't the right scale, then no amount of physically accurate lighting, modeling, or texturing will work because in order for it to really, 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 truly work, all of your geometry has to be at real world scale. So that's something we didn't really talk about. You guys just sort of modeled this, as did I, kind of at whatever Maya's default scale stuff is, and we haven't been thinking about scale. But that's the last piece of the puzzle, meaning that, I don't know if you can hear me, This render region but that's the last piece of the puzzle so um, if we have real world scale plus HDR lighting plus correct motivated 3d lighting plus photo textures plus the AI standard surface um, I think I already mentioned accurate lighting oh and the best modeling that you can possibly create or find if you if you do all those things and then finally have real world scale, then that's how we create photo real 3D. Um, there's a term for it, it's called PBR. And PBR does not mean um, trying to create 3D drinking PBR because I've tried it, it doesn't work. And who really likes that beer anyway? I don't know. But PBR stands for physically based rendering, physical based rendering. So physical based rendering is a workflow, a physical based workflow, if you will. And if you follow everything in that physical based rendering workflow, then you're going to get photorealism. I'm getting pretty close. The only thing I'm really lacking right now in is proper scale. But other than proper scale, I've got, I would say, pretty, pretty close to realism here. I don't know if you guys agree with me, but I'd say the banana looks real, the apples look real, the candlesticks, candles, they all look real or pretty, pretty close to real anyway. Um, who's got questions, comments, concerns? Ooh, Apple. Um, how are you guys feeling about this? I'm gonna stop the stream before we get Twitch Inception again. There are only 13 of you here right now. <laughs> um, yeah, so I guess I'll stop the stream at this point. I hope you like the banana. I hope you like the apple. I hope you like the table. Uh, if you want to know how to make a Coke can, then I guess watch the previous video. I don't think anybody has like... So how, how hmm? do you render at a higher resolution again? Oh, I'm sorry. So then when you want to go to your final render, you can go into your render settings. Go to your render settings. It's going to be the one, two, three, fourth slate with the gear. Scroll down towards the bottom and we actually have image size presets. So if I wanted to go up from 640 by 480, I could go to full 1024. And that would then give me 1024 by 768. By the way, this is your render region right here. That's this icon, it's the blue. You guys can't see me, can you? Damn it. 
Or can you? Yes, you can. I'm still streaming. Okay, just making sure. Um, back to what I was saying. So in your render settings, change this to 1024. And if you can't see what you're rendering, this is your render uh, resolution. What am I trying to say? Resolution gate. This is your resolution gate, and that's going to tell you what actually renders in this box. And then if you've done all that, make sure that you have this off, this render selected objects only. This checkbox should be off. I repeat off unless you just select all your objects, I guess. But turn it off, render the whole thing, and that's, I guess, where I'm going to switch back to Discord. And I'll post this final render in, in Discord. But I have to stop the stream now to switch back to Discord, and we'll d discuss like any questions you guys might have. And what can you do about fireflies? Sampling. Oh, God, it's struggling. Oh, so much struggle.